Coming up next is the Dr. Kim Taylor Show. Here's your chance to talk about what matters to you. Although you'll receive helpful advice from Dr. Kim, remember this is not to be construed as any form of psychotherapy, diagnosis or treatment, and cannot replace a therapeutic relationship with a mental health professional. You can reach Dr. Kim by calling 564-1290 or 866-564-1290. You can also listen live on the internet at drkimtaylorshow.com. Now, here's Dr. Kim. Today, the topic is going to be about dreams. And what do dreams mean? We all know that every single person on earth dreams. It happens to be something that's very universal. So every night when you go to sleep, your mind continues to process and sort through emotions or experiences. And really, whether you remember your dreams or not, your dreams are a way that your unconscious mind works to communicate with your conscious mind. A lot of dreams are thought of as a reflection of the thoughts and feelings or even sometimes the wishes and fantasies that we have that are stirred up perhaps by recent events that have happened in our day or from past experiences. And what we often find when we try to interpret dreams is that they can seem very straightforward and their meaning can be relatively clear sometimes. But other times they can be very distorted or they are disguised and it's very hard to recognize what they actually mean. But if you spend any time processing your dreams, they can help you to understand parts of your own personality or different aspects of yourself and your own life that you may be struggling with. And so working through dreams and coming to what they mean to you is just a way to help you connect to your own inner wisdom and your intuition. The research shows us that there are some very common themes with dreams. And some of the more common ones are dreams of falling or dreams of flying. Another one is being naked in public or losing your teeth, sometimes being chased or even there's a lot of dreams that have a lot of water or people swimming. And these are all very common. But while there's no single definitive meaning for the symbols and images in our dreams, there are several guidelines that can really help us to see our dreams more clearly and understand what the underlying meaning is. So, of course, in the end, it's still important to look within yourself to find out what the dreams really mean to you. So with all that said, my guest today is Carter Stout. He's a psychotherapist and dream analyst. He has a private practice in Brentwood, California, and he's here today to help us sort through what dreams mean and help you in your own life to interpret some dreams or to understand the recurring themes. So if you have a dream that is reoccurring, Or if you would like some help to interpret it, by all means, give us a call at 805-564-1290 or the toll-free number is 866-564-1290. You can also send in questions by email at drkim at drkimtaylorshow.com. So I'll be right back with my guests after this short break. I'm Dr. Kim Taylor, and you're listening to the Dr. Kim Taylor Show right here at KZSB AM 1290. You are listening to Dr. Kim Taylor on KZSB AM 1290. My guest is Carter Stout, and he's a psychotherapist and dream analyst. And he helps his clients to focus on really deciphering what these dreams mean, what the thoughts are, the behavioral patterns, and really to seek out and focus on what dreams mean. So welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. It's a, it's a pleasure being on your program. Let's start out with you telling us, really, what is the purpose of dreams? Well, uh, that's a very good question. The, you know, uh, we, we all dream, um, most of us anyway, um, a large, large percentage of us dream on a regular basis almost every night. And uh, so what is it, what is happening when we dream is... Um, something that people have, uh, 
you know, a question that people have grappled with uh, for a long time. And um, essentially, what my belief is, and the belief of uh, many depth psychologists, really, is that dreams are what we call con- compensatory, meaning they have a distinct aim and a distinct purpose. They're not arbitrary. So essentially what a dream is, it's a, it's a communication from our unconscious part of ourself or our psyche. And if you could think of the unconscious part of yourself being conscious and having a consciousness and having a uh, purpose, it would be to help rebalance um, your psyche when things get out of balance. So, so our dreams essentially are uh, little stories um, that are enigmatic, that are uh, in a language that most of us don't know how to decipher, and they are meant to help us rebalance ourselves um, so that we can be happier, healthier, more resolved, more actualized human beings. There are lots of people who say that they don't recall what their dreams are or that they don't think that they do dream, but why is it important that we try to remember our dreams? Well, uh, the dream world is a, is a wonderful place. It's... Um, it is uh, essentially a, uh, it's, it's being in dialogue with the sacred part of ourself or our soul. Um, what Carl Jung believed is that we all have a soul and that the soul uh, is, the, is the gatekeeper to uh, a place where all of the images and all of the history of time is kept, and he called that the collective unconscious. And he said that when we dream, our soul will reach into the collective and, and gather an image that is right for us, and it'll push, us into, it push it into our dream state. And then when we wake up, it'll be in our consciousness. So it is, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's important because it's really a very sacred uh, dialogue with a very... Uh, spiritual and important part of ourselves. Why is it, do you think, that most people disregard the dreams that they do have, or just to think that they're not that significant? Well, you know, that's a great question, Dr. Kim. The, the, what I believe is that we are conditioned to think that our dreams are not important. Uh, when we're young, when we are growing up and we have a bad dream, our parents may say to us, don't worry about it, it's just a dream, it's not going to hurt you, it's not real. And so that belief really uh, is, uh, you know, becomes imprinted in us. And as we grow older, we say, oh, I just, I had this funny dream last night. And and, uh, we may tell a friend or we may think about it for a moment, but not really be able to understand it and discount it as being something that's arbitrary or not important. So parents really do it to kind of protect their child so that they're not afraid of the dreams or that they can relax again and go back to sleep. That's exactly right. So it begins for one purpose, but then it also means that they may disregard and think that their dreams uh, should be feared. Yes. Well, should maybe not be feared, but uh, I think that the dreams that... um, the scary dreams are the ones that parents really pay attention to because, you know, their child might come into their bed in the middle of the night and say, I had a scary dream, and it's very, uh, and I understand the logic behind it and the psychology behind it when a parent tries to sue the child and say, oh, don't worry, it wasn't real, it was just a dream. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about the monsters in your dreams because they're not real. Um, and so that helps the child and lulls the child back to sleep. And, of course, you know, our, our greatest teachers are our parents as we grow up, and so we believe them. And uh, those beliefs become uh, things that we carry with us into our adolescence and into our adulthood. And, and uh, so I, um, I think that parents are doing the best that they can and trying to help their children. And, uh, you know, some parents may even believe that dreams are, are not important. And so they're, they believe that they're telling the truth to their children when they're saying that. Is it true that people need help to actually figure out what their dreams mean, or can they do this on their own? They can do it on their own with 
some basic guidance. Um, there are a million dream manuals out there, dreams, uh, you know, there are um, uh, books that have interpretations of specific dreams, and I'm not such a, an ardent supporter of all of that kind of literature, because I think that each dream is very specific to the dreamer. So I think that there are certainly some trends in dreams, and there are dreams that people share from many different cultures, but, they're, um, but the dream is very unique to the person who is having the dream, and, and that needs to be really understood and focused on. But um, with a little bit of help from someone who is a trained dream analyst, uh, people can become more comfortable with their dreams and become more connected to their dreams and uh, realign their understanding uh, that dreams are important. And uh, very simply, they can start to perhaps keep a dream journal by their bed and uh, write down a few images from their dream when they wake up in the morning and bring that with them and, you know, and, and really think about that during the day. Um, I, uh, that's what I do with my dreams. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful experiment to consistently be uh, trying to understand them better and through understanding a dream, really understanding yourself better. So how did doing this for yourself help you? Because there must have been a reason why you got so involved in this and are so enthusiastic about it. Well, you know, I, I, went, I uh, did my doctoral studies at, at Pacifica Graduate Institute, which is in Carpinteria. And before I went there, I got a, my, a master's degree at a place called Southwestern College in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And both of these institutions really were very, uh, placed a lot of importance on dreaming and the dream life. Uh, and there were courses on dreams and literature assigned on dreams. And uh, so I was really fortunate to be in these environments that really supported this idea that dreams are important and uh, very much believed the, the professors and uh, those who preceded me. And um, so that was really my first introduction to this idea that dreams are, are significant and important. Is it, is it really true that all of the figures or all of the things that are happening within the dream really are uh, an aspect of ourselves? That is certainly one way to look at a dream, absolutely. That is uh, the way that Carl Jung looked at dreams. But uh, they're also, if you are dreaming about somebody that you're very close to, a family member, a brother, sister, a spouse, or a partner, there's also the possibility that you could really just be dreaming about them. Um, because there are situations where we just are, we've had an interaction with someone and then we dream about them. And, uh, but in, in most cases, the figures in our dreams do represent aspects of ourselves. So if you were dreaming about an artist or you were dreaming about a, an athlete, uh, you would be dreaming about the artistic side of yourself or the athletic side of yourself. So. Okay. We really take aspects that are happening within our own life. We mix them up with maybe some other things that we're working on. Sure. <clears throat> on a subconscious or unconscious level, and we mix them all up in their dream. And that's why dreams are not so straightforward sometimes, that, they're, that they can be distorted, that it does take a bit to be able to really examine the dream to figure out what the meaning and purpose is for the individual involved, because it's always going to be different. There is no one clear-cut way to analyze a dream, correct? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, and uh, that's one of the most mysterious things and one of the most exciting things when you are working with dreams is that they have the potential to unlock something for the individual, and there have been many times in my practice when a dream has really been so helpful in um, 
allowing us to gather information that wasn't available previous um, consciously. So an example would be uh, someone dreaming about a um, a uh, something that um, that happened in their crib, uh, or or that a crib was in a dream, and then doing some work around that and uh, understanding that um, there was some traumatic events that happened to this person uh, when they were young, um, and so there's a there's a really powerful and and what I would say is that psyche um, delivered those image uh, images in the dream so that that person would then be conscious of those images and could do the work around those images to uh, to, to help that person heal I find that a lot of people say that their dream kind of drifts away before they can recall exactly what it is. So it really kind of slips their mind. So what do you uh, suggest in uh, how people can go about trying to recall their dream? Well, there's one simple way that seems to work for many people, which is really just to keep a dream journal. And that is just a notebook that you can keep on your bedside table. And when you wake up, whether it's in the middle of the night or it's the next morning, just to scroll down a few images, uh, a few thoughts about the dream. And if you revisit that later in the morning or throughout the next day, just those few images that you've written down will help to get you back inside the dream. And then you can be a little bit more thorough and write down the action of the dream. And uh, so... We, it happens to all of us. We wake up in the morning and we have this very vivid image in our head and we go about our morning, get in the shower and eat some breakfast and then all of a sudden it's gone. And uh, it, uh, it really, it, 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 it essentially means that we are, you know, we're living in a conscious world and we have a lot of distractions and that very sacred time in our dream space is something that we are not that connected to. And uh, so therefore, we forget about them pretty easily. Okay, but you also don't need to think that you have to write down the whole uh, story. You can just use a few of the fragments and just jot down a few notes. Exactly. Okay. Absolutely. And the best time to do this is as soon as you wake up. As soon as you wake up, whether it be at uh, 3 in the morning and, and you could you know, write a few things down. Because if you, if you have a dream, if, if you're having a vivid dream uh, in the middle of the night and you wake up and you don't write it down, there's a good possibility that when you wake up in the morning, you will already have forgotten it. Okay. And I think what also works is that to tell yourself before you go to sleep that you want to recall your dream first thing in the morning and then be uh, prepared with your paper and pencil. Um, but to just make note of that, it seems like that sometimes helps to recall sure. the dream in the morning, too. That's absolutely right. And, and what I would say is to even take it a step further. And if you're not dreaming, if you are uh, one of those people that say, well, I don't dream, then... I would encourage you to get into a dialogue with the unconscious part of yourself uh, that we call Psyche and, and really have a conversation with Psyche and ask Psyche to help you start to dream, uh, to really be in a dialogue, in communication with that part of yourself and to say, you know, I'd really appreciate it if I could start dreaming and I really want to dream. And that dialogue really opens up the possibility wonderfully for people who are not dreaming to start to dream. My guest for the hour is Carter Stout, and we are talking about the meaning of dreams. Right after the break, we're going to start to talk about what are some of the common themes that we have within our dreams. So stay with me. I'll be right back. I'm Dr. Kim Taylor, and you're listening to The Dr. Kim Taylor Show. You are listening to Dr. Kim Taylor on KZSB AM 1290. If you are just joining me, we are talking about what dreams mean. And I'm here with Carter Stout. He's a psychotherapist and dream analyst. And Carter, really, you believe that dreams are a vital part of helping clients to really better understand themselves. I do. I really do. It is... Uh 
there there are different, certainly different ways that therapists work, and uh, there are valuable ways, and 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 there are certainly techniques that uh, many of us do share in the work that we do. Uh, dream analysis for many psychotherapists is really not something that uh, they're trained in, and uh, it's it is an art that was was certainly more prevalent, I would say, 50 years ago. People looked more at their dreams in psychotherapy. And I think it's so vital and so important and uh, urge people to start to really consider their dreams again um, and a as a way to really be in touch with the unconscious part of themselves and gather important information that can help them become more balanced and more healthy in their life. There are definitely common themes that dreams have. And I think maybe if we go through some of these, because sure. I ask often uh, when somebody says, is this common? There are a lot of themes that it is a surprising that many, many people dream about. Yeah. So let's let's hit some of those. Do you, do you have one that is the most common? Gosh, there's so many common dreams, and, and this is such an important idea uh, to talk about. There are people in all different countries around the world that are having dreams about with similar themes. And so what uh, that really lends credence to is that dreams are archetypal. That, uh, that, and by archetypal, I mean they are part of all of us. They are, we, we as a uh, global community share the same information in the unconscious part of ourselves. And uh, it, it may be manifested a bit differently according to what culture we're in, but there are very many themes that we do share. So someone in, in Africa may uh, have a very similar dream to someone in South America, or someone in Australia may dream and uh, be, have it be very similar to someone in Europe. And it's, and it's wonderful. It's a, it's a connecting principle that brings us all together. Um, the, one of the most prevalent, I think, one of the most common dreams is, flying, is a flying dream. Mm -hmm. uh, and these, uh, these are wonderful dreams that people have, but they can also be scary dreams. Uh, sometimes people are way up in the universe and they're passing the planets and they are uh, a bit frightened. Um, others feel exhilarated by these dreams and feel um, that they are uh, actually doing the flying when they're in the dreams and they wake up and they may be in a cold sweat and say, wow, well, uh, I was up in the clouds and there was condensation and here I am in my bed and was I really there? So these are, these are wonderful dreams. And um, essentially, uh, what I believe is they're, they're just really about um, gaining a new perspective on your life. So you may have this type of dream when you need to gain new perspective and need to look at something differently, like a as a bird looks down, as the hawk flies and looks down on the planet and on the earth. Um, or that you are, in fact, gaining new perspective on something, on a relationship, on you know, something that has to do with your family, or something that has to do with yourself. Uh, but it's really about taking a different kind of look at something. All right. And what about falling? Because I know this is also common, that people, that it can be something about feeling overwhelmed or feeling like the ground is coming out from under you. Can yes. you explain that a little more? Yes. That's, uh, it's a dream that people have when they, are, uh, when they have a lot of anxiety in their life, when they're, when they're feeling um, as though they are uh, overwhelmed, as you said. And um, you know, that, uh, that they don't have solid footing or a firm foundation in their life. And um, this might happen when someone's taken on too much or is moving too fast or has complicated their life and really need to simplify it, um, really need to slow down and uh, incorporate some other healthy things into their life 
that can create some serenity and some peace. Okay, so, so once more, it is not just one common theme for everyone, and it will depend on what is happening within your own life at that time, too. So you have to be able to incorporate what's going on for the individual as well as to be able to make some assumptions about a general sense or a general symbolic meaning of a dream. You're absolutely right. Okay. You're absolutely right. Whatever is going on in the life of that person or what has gone on in the life of that person. So say uh, there was a time that someone was feeling extremely overwhelmed three years ago, uh, and that person at that time was spending a lot of time with their brother, and then the brother came out to visit (laughs) again uh, three years later, and the individual started having these dreams again. Uh, So they're just reminded of that time. So we can have dreams that connect us to different times in our life as well. Okay, what what about the one about losing teeth? This seems like a funny one, but a lot of people dream about losing their teeth. They do, they do. And when you think about losing their teeth, and, uh, you know, it happens when we are children, um, between the ages of one and two, really. Uh, We get our baby teeth, and then we lose them at about five or six, and... We then we get our, uh, our our adult teeth, and so teeth are really uh, it, they represent a time of transition for us. We are growing from a child into you know an infant into a child, or growing from a child into an adolescent, and uh, so you might have a dream like this when you are changing jobs or moving from one home to another home or uh, breaking up in a relationship or entering a new phase in your life, um, it really simply means that you are growing and emerging and evolving from one phase of life to the next. Okay. And what about being chased? That's also a common theme. People find themselves being chased throughout dreams night after night. Yes. These are certainly scary dreams, uh, depending on what you're being chased by. But uh, oftentimes people are being chased by some sort of demon or some sort of figure and they don't really know who it is or what it is, but they know that it's frightening. And this type of dream really essentially means that there is a part of their personality that is needing attention so that um, something has been unaddressed and something is... Um, essentially saying, take a look at me um, and, and what is happening in the dream is that the dream is revealing that it needs to be addressed and, and taken a look at. Um, it's, um, you know, what Jung believed is that we have a soul, which is our most purest form, and then we have a shadow, so we're made up of the dark and the light. Mm-hmm. And so this would be considered a shadow dream. And in our shadow, we have all of the things that are unwanted, all of the things that we repress, our fears, uh, our insecurities, our jealousy, our guilt, all of those types of things. And this is really, when you're being chased by something that's frightening, it's really a shadow dream. And one of those elements of your life is saying, please take a look at me. Uh, You can't repress me any longer. Um, you know, people have these types of dreams oftentimes when they have addictions in their life um, or they're in a lot of fear. You know, fear can be represented as one of these figures that's chasing you. Okay, so it can definitely be a very unwanted aspect of yourself that you're not looking at that you really need to be That's exactly right, to. Dr. Ken. Okay, so how about being naked? This is huge. Also, that I'm sure that each and every one of us has maybe had the one about being caught naked and or unprepared for something in our lives. Right, right. These are, they can be funny dreams, certainly. Um, there, it is, uh, it's a dream that really reveals that um, it, uh, you are feeling vulnerable. You are feeling as though you're exposed. And it can happen at, at different times in our life when we are feeling that way. Um, it can be, they can be very unsettling dreams uh, because you're 
feeling unprotected, um, and people essentially have the ability to look to see the real you. So it's about taking off the mask, taking off the clothes, and revealing yourself in your truest form, which um, for most of us is, is a pretty scary thing. Okay, I have an email here from Dave who is actually uh, describing one of the other fearful dreams that uh, is a theme. So I'm just going to read that to you, and then, sure. and then you can help him. Okay. He says, I have a reoccurring dream that feels very disturbing and confusing to me. I am 18 years old, the youngest of four children, and I keep dreaming that my parents are dying, and I am watching them in my dream. It happens in different ways, like driving off a cliff or somehow they get disconnected from the back of a train and they shrivel away. What is similar is that I can do nothing to stop it from mm-hmm. happening. And when I wake up, I feel very anxious and then irritated. Mm-hmm. My parents are healthy, but could I be seeing something that is going to happen in the future? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a possibility, certainly. And uh, But what I would say is that that's not an uncommon dream, and it's not a dream about your parents dying. Uh, it's about your relationship with your parents, maybe going through uh, some kind of a psychological death so that you are maybe growing into adulthood and into a man, and therefore your parents uh, symbolically are not as... Um, powerful figures in your life, and they may be becoming more like uh, equals in your life. Um, so it's, it's not a dream about your parents dying. Um, it is about your relationship to your parents and also your relationship to the aspects of what your parents represent to you um, inside of yourself. Um, okay. So... If your father is a very, say, brave and heroic uh, type of person and you've always perceived him that way, um, then there may be an element inside of yourself uh, where you feel as though your bravery or your heroism is, for some reason, coming to an end. Um, So so the, the, the dream is a metaphor for what is happening in your own life. Right, and it sounds like if he's 18 years old, it sounds very much that it also may be that this is the time he's thinking about going away to college, leaving his parents, leaving the safety of home, all the changes that have to take place and how scary and or frightening and or not knowing what's going to happen to his parents as he leaves and making that change in his life. That's right, that's right. Um, Do all dreams really require that we interpret them? No, you don't, certainly don't have to interpret all of your dreams. If you have a lovely dream where you are out in a field and there are beautiful flowers around you and it's a sunny day and there are birds flying around and you are aware that you're just in a really wonderful space uh, and you wake up and you say, wow, that was quite a lovely dream. That's really as far as you need to take it. Uh, You can say that was just really wonderful. Gosh, I feel so refreshed and I feel really good, and I had a a delightful, wonderful experience, and uh, I would say just relish that and enjoy that, Uh, and, and, uh, but if you wanted to, you could say, well, what type of garden was I in? What, what were the flowers representing? You can always unpack and go deeper and deeper and deeper, but if there isn't a need to, you don't have to. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, here's a dream that I always dream, and it's about swimming. It's about being in water, and the water is this clear, and it goes on and on and on. So what does that mean? Well, the, that's a, that is a dream that many of us have. There are two dreams, and Jung wrote about this uh, uh, extensively, because he had a dream about a home and being inside of this home and going down into the basement and seeing all of these rooms with treasures. And also, there are many dreams about people being submerged in water, and really what these dreams represent are being down in our unconscious parts of ourselves. So water is symbolic of the unconscious. So it's symbolic of psyche. So it's really about, it's, a, it's actually a very positive dream because when we dream about these things, it means that we're connected to psyche. 
and many of us aren't connected very well to psyche. Uh, and so if we're having a dream about being in water, it means that we are doing that depth work and, and doing that important spiritual work. Okay, we need to take a quick break. Uh, my guest is Carter Stout, and we are going to be back. And let's talk a little bit about what are the steps that we can take to help each person to understand their own dreams. So I'll be right back. I'm Dr. Kim Taylor, and you're listening to The Dr. Kim Taylor Show. You are listening to Dr. Kim Taylor on KZSB AM 1290. My guest for the hour is Carter Stout, and he's a licensed psychotherapist and dream analyst. And we are really trying to figure out what the meaning of dreams are, because dreams can help us to discover some hidden truths about ourselves, and they can really connect you to your inner wisdom. So as we're really trying to help people to use their dreams, what are some of the effective tools that they can do in order to help to understand their own dreams? That, that's a great question, Dr. Kim. I, I think most importantly is to recognize that dreams are not literal, so that when you have a dream about something like your parents dying or being in a uncomfortable situation uh, or, or some other traumatic situation happening in your life, that they aren't premonitions and, and they aren't literal. They're always symbolic, and dreams speak to us in a language of metaphors, riddles, symbols, um, similes, and, uh, and they're wonderfully um, mysterious in that way. So uh, it, it's our job to be a dream detective and to go in and say, well, what potentially could that image mean? And what could that person mean? And this is called unpacking the dream. And it's really, uh, we, we, if we can excavate and really dig a bit, uh, oftentimes we can come up with such important information and, as you said, such wisdom about ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we definitely want to be able to first write them down or write down any part of it that just comes to you right after you wake. You're talking about also maybe thinking about some of the relationships of the people in your dream and what those people mean to you. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you are dreaming about people that you know, uh, that is that is significant. It's it's uh, it's extremely significant. The, there's nothing arbitrary about the dream, so that if you dream about somebody from your past um, that you knew several years ago, what were you doing at that time in your life? What was that relationship uh, to you? Uh, what characteristics did that person demonstrate, and why was that important to you at that time? Those are really what you're dreaming about. And um, so if you're fortunate enough to... to you have a dream and you can remember the dream and it is about a person uh, from your past or someone that you know, then um, it's, it's, it's very good to pay attention to what that potentially could mean. Okay. And one of the questions that I always ask when somebody has told me the parts of the dream is to ask, how did you feel about it when you woke up? That, is, uh, that certainly is important too. Uh, as I was saying before, if we have a really pleasant dream about mm, being in love or seeing someone or holding someone's hand or being in, a, in nature or having a good experience, then uh, we may wake up and, and feel, really, feel, feel really good. Um, and those are the types of dreams that recognize and affirm that our psyche is in a good place at the moment. But if we're having a dream that's a little bit more frightening, a little bit more scary, a little bit more traumatizing, that essentially what that means is there's something that we need to take a look at. And that, uh, that by taking a look at that, we are going to hopefully help ourselves get into more of a balance. If we're feeling depressed or if we're feeling anxious, those, the depression and anxiety 
both may be represented by figures in our dreams, and they need some attention. Um, and uh, so certainly if we're having a, a, a good dream, a pleasant dream, um, it, 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 it means that we're in a, in a healthier place in life. Okay, and you definitely want to be able to be open to that dream, so you want to be able to ask yourself, what may that dream be telling you? That, and really be open to asking yourself, what does this mean to me? What could it signify? What's going on in my life? Is there something that I'm not wanting to see that perhaps I can see here? So you really want to be able to remain open Certainly. to all these and possibilities. This, um, you know, it's... Uh, if you do have a spiritual practice, if you are someone who meditates, if you are someone who prays, if you're someone who has that spiritual side, uh, this uh, dream analysis and those types of practices really are very uh, connected uh, because it's really about being in communication with sacred energy and with a uh, very uh, a spiritual part of yourself. Um, so, and if you don't have a spiritual practice and, and that's not something that you believe in, mm-hmm. you can still take a look at your dreams as well. Okay. So we have about 30 seconds left here. How can looking at my dreams make me a happier person? Well, I think that the key to happiness, or at least one of them that I have found is a better understanding of ourselves and what it's hard for most people to know is what really is going on in the unconscious part of them. You know, we have our consciousness, we have our cognitive part and the way that we think, but what is this great, this vast unconscious part of ourselves? And dreams really are a window into that unconscious part. And through the knowledge of understanding what that part really is, uh, what is happening in the unconscious, we can become happier, more balanced, more healthy, and more actualized in our life. Carter Stout, thank you very much for being on the program. I think you've given us a lot to think about, and I actually would love to have you back and just delve a little deeper into the meaning of dreams and how to help people to really access them for themselves. Dr. Kim, it's been a pleasure, and I would love to come back, and uh, thank you so much for having me. Okay, I'll be right back after a short break. I do want to let you know that if you'd like to reach Carter Stout, you can go to his website at www.carterstout, that's C-A-R-D-E-R-S-T-O-U-T dot com. I'll be right back after the break. You are listening to Dr. Kim Taylor on KZSB AM 1290. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the program. Dreams are a very valuable way to better understand yourself. And if you would like to contact Carter Stout, I will post his information on my website at drkimtaylorshow.com. You can also listen to the rebroadcasts Thursday evenings at 10 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. You can also download the podcasts on iTunes or my YouTube channel. Just go again to my website at drkimtaylorshow.com. I want to thank my engineer, Mark Giles, for helping me today, and I will be here next week live at 5 o'clock, as I am every Thursday. So I'm Dr. Kim Taylor, and until then, remember, nobody else has to change in order for you to feel better. Sweet dreams. I'll see you next Thursday.